It's the moment we have all been anticipating since the Giro d'Italia route was announced early this year. Stage 11, the Strade Bianca stage to Montalcino. 162 kilometers with 35 k's of Storato, the infamous white gravel road, all of them located in the final 70 k's of the race. Add into the mix just under two and a half thousand meters of climbing, mostly in the latter part of the day, and we had all the ingredients for a truly epic day in the saddle. Given the nature of it, we expected a big battle to get into the early break, but not only did it go quickly, it was also allowed almost 15 minutes of an advantage. Behind them, we did have the expected almighty fight for position going into the first gravel sector, and Ganna getting a little too excited on it, almost losing it on this right-hander with race leader Egan Bernal on his wheel. That pressure had had the desired effect on the riders behind them, though. Gaps opening up left, right and centre with Avonapool amongst the big names on the wrong side of one. Two groups did come back together before the next sector, but both Dan Martin and Davide Formolo were absent. Fast forward 30 k's and Avonapool was in trouble again. The rider in second place on GC completely isolated and Bernal did not need to hear that news twice. He was straight to the front of his group driving the pace. And the Belgian was furious about something, pulling out his earpiece as Almeida still hadn't come back to help him. At this point, we could see that the breakaway would be fighting out for the stage victory, just under six minutes advantage with 12 k's to go. And a few k's further on, Emmanuel Buchmann had gone on the attack. That acceleration enough to see Vincenzo Nibali dropped. With five k's to go, just two rides were left out front, Maro Schmidt and Alessandro Covey. As Buchmann pressed on behind them, Avonapol had already lost close to two minutes on his main rivals, and Ciccone too was about to lose contract with the main group. One man, though, was better than all of the rest again today, and it was the pink jersey himself, Egan Bernal, flying past Vlasov and soon onto the back wheel of Bookman. At the finish, we had a drag race between our two young riders out front, Schmidt opening up first, Covey able to draw alongside him, but that was as far as he got, the Swiss rider from Quebec Assos taking a famous stage victory. After that, though, all eyes were on this man, how much time could Egan Bernal put into his rivals? He sprinted all the way up to the finish line and we soon had our answer. Three seconds before Bookman crossed the line and it would be 23 before this man, Alexander Vlasov, stopped the clock for Astana Premier Tech. Behind him, Caruso, Yates and Foss were further three seconds back with Carfi suffering towards the finish, conceding 32 seconds on the pink jersey. For Avonapool, it was a long and agonising ride towards the finish line. Two minutes and eight seconds were what he conceded to Bernal. This was the man of the day though. Hats off to Mauro Schmidt. That was some ride for a first year pro. And it was the breakaway who filled the top 10 slots on the day. Van Hauker in third place, then De Bont, Guglielmi, Bataglin, Kluger, Gavazzi, Van der Horn and Narsen. Best of the rest was Bernal, and it was the GC favourites between 11th and 20th. Vlasov, Caruso, Yates, Foss, Guerrero, Carthy, Ciccone, and Betiel there also for EF Education Nippo. Well, it was a good day for this man. Egan Bernal now has a much more comfortable advantage on the GC. 45 seconds in front of Vlasov. Damiana Caruso now up to third at 112. Carthy in fourth at 117. Yates there in fifth. Bookman up nine places to sixth. And Avonapool down to seventh place at two minutes and 22. No rest for the wicked though, as tomorrow is another demanding day for the riders. We're in the Apennines for what will be the longest stage of the race so far at 212 kilometers. No gravel tomorrow, despite the fact that we start from Siena, but we do have some serious climbing to contend with. Four classified climbs, the biggest being the Paso de la Consuma after 132 k's and the Paso de la Cala 30 k's later. The finish line is located in Bagno de Romagna, a venue that saw Omar Fraile take the win four years ago. It'll be somebody different tomorrow though, so make sure you tune back into GCN or Eurosport to catch all the action.